Welcome back to Showreel. That was Double Truth, an experimental short film by former Showreel volunteer Julius Lee. The film won the Jury Special Recognition Award at this year's Korean Film Festival in Australia. Right now, we're talking to 31's veteran talk show host, Sean Bindley. So Sean, um, what sort of challenges did you find like in having to create a show to go, you know, to be broadcast on television? Because that's a, not an easy task. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, I've been presenting shows down here for a couple of years now and I've been in the media for a, for a long, long time. So I actually do have a fair bit of experience. I guess the biggest challenge is, is, back, is you know, balancing the lack of budget here. Mm -hmm. um, because we're we're all volunteers basically, so we're all beholden to people's time and availability and what can do and how how uh, dedicated people are to the cause. Because in in taking this on as the as the person with the initial idea, you're looking mm -hmm. for people who are willing to take on the idea and take responsibility for it and run with it. Because we're all very busy, we all lead busy lives, and the more people we can have who are passionate about a project then the better the project can be. And I think I mean, you guys probably be experiencing that same thing, that the, the bigger the crew you have, the lighter the workload that yeah, it is. Definitely. Yeah, But as always with TV, you need to have something that people are gonna watch. Mm. Mm. Um, so what, what other shows, can you tell us a bit about the other shows you've worked on here before or just generally in the media? Well, it was the infamous Meet the Ministers program <laughs> in which I interviewed every state government minister over the course of a year. Um, you. <laughs> which just about finished me as a television host. <laughs> <laughs> but after about 18 months away, I was uh, actually happy to come back here. And previously, that, I, I, mean, I basically started as a volunteer a couple of years ago where I'd done a presentation course and I was interested in doing some more television presenting because I've been on radio for many years. Mm -hmm. And I rang the station up and said um, I'd be interested in doing some volunteering. And I had my own show two days later. Wow. <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, you've got to hit the ground running. You know, I mean, as anything, if you can show that you have the ability to, to do something, then there's always going to be an opportunity for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, because you also work in radio, yep. is that yep. correct? Yep. Um, I, I work at 98.9 FM in Brisbane. Nice. Um, I've been presenting a, a specialty music program there for 20 years this year. Wow, yeah. cool. Yeah. It's, a, it's a blues based music program, that's my particular passion. I've been a, a musician for, for many years as well and a, and a music promoter and a festival organiser and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So th that was a nice way for me to get involved in the entertainment industry way back in 1993 <laughs> when I first started out when I was coming to the end of my, my, my football career and I'd been looking around for something else to get involved in that I could be passionate about and yeah it's something very special to me I really enjoy it and I, you know I produce AFL broadcasts I'm currently working for the National Indigenous Radio Service as a sports reporter cool. um, which is another dream job for me. Yeah mm. what kind of drew you because football and then going into say presenting turning points is quite quite a jump there what what inspired you or drove you to be a presenter or get into the media like that? Oh, because I can't work for a boss. That's can't, and, and, and about many years ago, I'd sort of decided that if I was going to live an interesting life that I could be happy with, I was going to try and do things that I was passionate about, but not so much passionate about that I just get out of bed in the morning and go, wow, I'm going to work today. And that's a fantastic thing, you know? I mean, doing a radio show on Monday night, you know, so many people have those kind of Monday oh. yeah. I get up Monday morning and go, I'm going to do a four hour radio show tonight and I'm going to pick the music that I want to play. And there's thousands of people all around the world who listen to it every week yeah. and I'm going to get paid for it. So obviously you've had like an extremely long career in media. It, um, me and Claire want to get into something like that, like film we're studying. And mm. What sort of advice would you give to students like us and just in general? Don't put down any roots. Be prepared to move. Go where the work is. Mm -hmm. Get out of Brisbane straight away. Straight away? Really? Because there's no work here. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of the, the TV stations that do the major things are in Sydney or Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting calls for castings in Sydney sort of twice a week at the moment wow. because I'm busy at work. I just can't do But mm. the difference in productions going on in Brisbane and in Sydney and Melbourne is pretty remarkable. So I, I think if you're serious about a long-term career, you need to think about going where the work is. Many Australian, particularly crew, moving to the US these days. Mm, um, yeah. And a lot, you know, as far as film production, if you can get into the... TV commercial side of things, that's where the money is, but there's, you know, a, a select amount of jobs and lots of very talented people out there, but you've just got to be committed to it, you know, and constantly evolve and, and train and get more training and, and improve your skills and be there, put yourself forward and network, network, network. You've got to talk to people all the time and make sure that they know who you are and what you can do and what you can bring to the table to their project to make their project better. Because you need to enhance what it is that you're going to be involved in rather than just taking up space and doing the job because everybody's looking to raise the bar with their projects. So if you can raise the bar with everything you do, 
you can be ahead of the pack. It's kind of testament to the fact that, you know, you came in here to say, can I volunteer two days later? You've got a show. They yeah. obviously know you and know what you can do. Uh, uh, but you've got to be ready to go with it as well. Yeah. You know, too many people have had opportunities presented to them and haven't been able to grasp it or have been a bit, oh, I uh, don't know if I'm worthy. Mm. And the opportunity's always gone. There's always somebody else there. So if you're willing and ready with both hands to take an opportunity and you can run with it and hit the ground running, that's yeah. the old term in the media, then you're, then you're doing well. Mm. Have you got any projects you're sort of putting the feelers out for or you've got planning for the future? Oh, well, I mean, it's funny, it's been a big turning point in my life for the last couple of years because mm. I've got a fairly substantial injury that I'm having to deal with on a, on a daily basis. Mm. Um, I'd been a, you know, a footballer until 1992 or 93 and then I've been a professional musician for about 15 years. And when this injury came about and I was really looking at not having a lot of quality of life, um, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life and I decided I'd, I wanted to start another aspect of my life and get away because I was a very physical performer and I was doing a lot of driving up and down the coast all the time. It's late nights and not a lot of money, not a lot of satisfaction for, a, I guess, a normal family life. Yeah. Um, and I was keen to bring that into my home, with my, my relationship with my partner. And I'd always fancied doing more mainstream radio work, I guess. Uh, and, and more television and radio presenting, and I'm a voiceover artist, so I do t TV commercials and stuff, and I even do the occasional acting gig as well. Mm -hmm. But it was just an opportunity for me to try something again, to reinvent who I am and what I do for a life, for a living, yeah. and see where it takes me. That's amazing. It's really fascinating just where that has brought you. Yeah, yeah it's um, been a fun ride. <laughs> well, we have to take a break, but we'll be back soon with our reviews of Thor, The Dark World. Stay tuned. <laughs> 